Welcome to my new series, How to be Creatively Productive in Japanese Morphology. In this first video, I'm going to explain what this series is all about, and then introduce a new vocabulary item, chirakasu. Firstly, let me explain what this series is all about. In order to do that, I need to explain what the title of the series means. Productive in this title is a technical term from linguistics. If a word or a morpheme is productive, then it can be used easily to create new words. A morpheme is the smallest unit of language that has a meaning. For example, the English suffix ed is a morpheme, even though it is not a word. This morpheme indicates the past tense when added to the end of a verb. Now, this morpheme ed is really productive because it can be added to new verbs to form past tense. For instance, let's say a new verb plout, which I have just randomly created, means to make YouTube videos. So I plout every day. Even though this verb is completely new, every English speaker knows that the past tense of this verb would be plouted, which can be created by adding the ed ending. So I plouted yesterday. This is because the morpheme ed is very productive and can be applied very easily to new words. A morpheme can also be a word. For example, the new verb plout is a morpheme because it cannot be divided into smaller parts and it has a meaning. Another English morpheme en on the other hand is not very productive. This en is used for example to create the plural form of the noun ox, oxen. But since this morpheme is no longer productive in the English language, we don't use en to make plural forms of new nouns. This is why we all say YouTubers instead of YouTuberin. The second technical term, morphology, is simply about how word forms change. For example, from hataraku to work, to hatarakeru to be able to work, to hatarakenai to not be able to work, and so on. The morpheme, morpho, means shape, and it comes from Greek. You probably know other English words that have this morpheme in them, such as metamorphosis, which is a change in the form of a creature. Having introduced these technical terms, we can now move on to the morpheme, chirakasu, which is a verb that means to make a mess. Let's look at some examples of chirakasu when it is used by itself. Mata heya chirakashiteru, darashinai ko da ne. You made a mess in your room again. You're such an untidy child. Hikkoshite kita bakari na node, mada chirakatte imasu ga, douzo o hairi kudasai. The place is still a mess because I've just moved in here, but please come in. This morpheme also can be used creatively to make compound verb expressions. For example, tabe chirakasu is a combination of taberu to eat and chirakasu to make a mess. Tabe chirakasu therefore means to eat in a messy way. You might also hear kui chirakasu. Ku is the casual way of saying taberu. An example sentence would be ano kyaku kui chirakashita ue ni kui nige shite itta zo. Notice in this example that kui nige is also a compound verb expression in which ku to eat and nigeru to run away are combined to make a new verb to mean to run away without paying for a meal. Apart from the physical mess, these expressions imply that the way the customer ate and ran away was very rude and offensive. So a lot of the expressions using chirakasu show that whatever action chirakasu is combined with is offensive. Also, the verb that is combined with chirakasu must be in the masu form. So the masu form of taberu is tabemasu. So just drop masu and you get tabe. The masu form of ku is kuimasu. Drop masu and you get kui. Let's look at another example. That disgusting bald man keeps looking at me. It is difficult to adequately incorporate the connotation of hagechirakasu in the English translation, but hagechirakasu describes the way in which a person is bald, specifically when a person is bald in a very messy and offensive way. The third example is Do not just take off your clothes and leave them there after you come home from school. Now, although chirakasu can be used with many other verbs, its degree of productivity, or the ease of use with other verbs, is not so high. In other words, there are many other verbs that do not go with chirakasu. For instance, we don't really say hashiri chirakasu to mean run in a messy way, or asobi chirakasu to play in a messy way. But you can intentionally combine chirakasu with other verbs to be more creative with your Japanese. Even though native speakers might not use that expression, they can still understand what you mean and will most likely appreciate your creativity with the Japanese morphology. For example, if you say naki chirakasu, this would mean to cry in a messy way. This expression only gets about 1000 hits on Google search, so it is not a very common expression, but you will be understood by Japanese speakers. Another expression, hanashi chirakasu, has even fewer 
a hit of 128 and means to chatter. And this expression implies that the way the person is talking is very loud and offensive. This is the end of the first episode of this series. Let me know in the comment section below if you want this series to continue or whether you have seen any compound verbs that do not make sense to you. And check out my other videos. See you next time.